Okay, now I come to the next point, how to overcome sins. Now many, many Christians say it's too difficult. It's too difficult to overcome anger, frustration. Now depression is also sin. Lack of faith is also sin because anything that is not glorifying God is sin. <coughs> Think of this. The Christians in heaven, do they have depression? No. When we live like the Christians in heaven, then we are not sinning. But when we have the sinful nature and then when we are depressed and happy, uh, have negative thoughts, negative emotions, all these are sins. So many people didn't realize that, that they have sins. Even when people serve God, people still have sin. For instance, when people serve God, they might be impatient. They might be saying, people are not changing. What's the use of it? That's already sin. So we, in, even in a ministry, there is sin attached to it. But, so we want to ask God to forgive our uh, sins attached to our, our ministry, to our uh, good things, the good works have sins. And s the first thing we want to know is that sins are destructive. Galatians 6, 8. Whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Very simple and clear. <coughs> Whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. When they sow to please the flesh, to follow the flesh, then from the flesh will reap destruction. Every sin will have destruction. Uh, now this is a very important, very important teaching. I want to confess to you all, when I first became a Christian, many times I sinned and I had this thought, I'll ask God to forgive me later. I don't know if you have this thought. I think everyone has that thought, many times. When you are about to sin, and then you say, I'm going to sin this time, and I'll ask God to forgive me later. Many Christians think, think like that. That they think, think, well, it's too hard to overcome all sins. I'll ask God to forgive me later. When they have anger, they say, I'll be angry now, but later I'll ask God to forgive me. Then we'll be okay, then God forgives me. Or when people look at pornography, the lust, lustful pictures online, and then they say, well, I'll watch it this time. I'll ask God to forgive, for, to forgive me later. And didn't realize that it's destructive. Because I have noticed this in my Christian life. Whenever we sin afterwards, we feel bad. And then we feel we don't want to pray. Because we feel we are dirty. We don't want to pray. Have you noticed this? After you sin, you just feel... You want to hide from God. You just don't want to think about God. And I noticed that this is bad. And it affected me. And when I, after I experienced the Holy Spirit, after I experienced the love and the joy, and I said, and then I, the first change that came from that, that God is so loving. I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to offend Him. And the next thing is, when I pray for people, people experience it right away. Just Shortly after, just a few days, two or three days after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I prayed for people, they already experienced the Holy Spirit. I said, this is wonderful that, that you know, the power of God is given to me. And anyone hunger for God, receive the power of God. And I said, this is wonderful that I can serve God with power. I minist my ministry will be different from now on. Immediately in my church, there were many people changed. And also in the first year, after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I brought many people to Christ when I prayed for them. So I saw this is wonderful. And I said, I don't want anything to block my relationship with God. I don't want anything to take away this presence of God and to make God unhappy. It's very important to have this personal feeling with God. God loves me so much. And God doesn't like sin. I don't want to make God unhappy. That's very important. The second is, it will affect our ministry, our life. But I don't want to make God unhappy. If you have this personal feeling with God, I don't want to make God unhappy. For instance, you see that I love my wife. I don't want to make my wife unhappy because she's so nice to me. I want to keep that loving relationship. Now with God, that loving relationship is even stronger. 
So we should say, when I sin, I make him unhappy. Can you think like that? To have this personal feeling toward God. I don't want to make him unhappy. And then I don't want my life destroyed because it will bring destruction. I don't want to affect myself. You know, some people think, well, just a negative thought. <coughs> now, let me ask you, what negative thought? Is it a sin? Is it a sin? What negative thought? Is it a sin? It is. Does it bring destruction? It will. Now, of course, one negative thought, you handle it, it will just bring a little destruction. If you handle it right away, then you min minimize the, the destruction. But if you just let the negative thoughts stay on, for instance, you say, oh, I cannot do the ministry. I have no strength. If you have that thought, you keep that thought for half a day, how would it affect you? It will come back again. You will keep saying, I cannot do it. I have no strength. I have no power. Have you noticed one negative thought, if we let it stay for a while, it will affect our next day and our next day. It continue to affect us. It will also take away our faith. And negative emotions have long lasting effect too. When you are unhappy for one day, you remember that day that you were unhappy. Like for instance, you do evangelism, and then you fail. Very often, Christians get unhappy. I fail. I cannot do it. And that happened to me too. And immediately the Holy Spirit reminded me to handle it. And God gave me this thought. Now, what, what, first I want to say, why does negative feeling after failure in evangelism would affect us? Because when you fail in evangelism and then you feel bad, and then next time when you are about to do evangelism, you will say, I don't want to do it because I might fail. Yeah. So it affects you. Now, and God gave me this thought. I thank, I thank God. The more we are close to God, the more He will give us thoughts. And the thought was like this. If I bring the gospel to this person and this person doesn't believe, but when we go to heaven one day, God will say to this person, when Pastor Yip spoke to you about, it, about Jesus, you did not believe. But Pastor Yip has spoken to you about Jesus. That glorifies, that glorifies my name. So God will say, even though you haven't brought that person to Christ, but when you talk about Jesus, it glorifies Jesus that my children have talked to people about Jesus. Can you imagine if no one in the whole world have heard any Christian witness to them? Then in heaven, God's name will, will not be glorified because people say, no one ever told us about Jesus. We never heard about Jesus because the Christian never talked about it. Then, then it won't glorify God's name. So that thought came to me, even when I fail in evangelism, I have done it, it will glorify God's name. So I said, thank God I, I glorified your name. I can be happy about it. So I changed my mood. Every time I do evangelism, I fail, I tell myself, I've done my job and God is happy and I glorify God's name and I can be happy. So I changed my way of thinking. But if I don't change it, it will affect me. <coughs> I have seen many Christians affected by sins and I guess you have seen too. Many Christians are affected in different ways. First way, Many, now, many Christians, when they first believe in Jesus, they will experience the motivation from God to love God more, the voice of God to not to sin. Have you experienced that when you first believe in Jesus? <coughs> did you notice that motivation was very strong at the beginning? And then if we don't have a close relationship with God, we notice that motivation will become weaker and weaker. And some Christians, that motivation become weaker and weaker, and they lose that motivation. Have you seen lukewarm Christians? Mm -hmm. Many of them had motivation in the past. Mm -hmm. But at one point, they lose the motivation, and then they, they don't want to pray, and they watch pornography. I've heard people tell, tell me that story. The husband used to love God and serve God in the church, and now he watched pornography all the time. Now he doesn't want to go to church. I've heard stories like this all the time. So it affects their relationship with God. 
and if they don't follow God, and then it affects the whole life, then they are being captured by Satan. Then they became the servant of Satan. Now the worst is that they will lose salvation. For some people, they did not lose salvation, but they become lukewarm, lazy, unfruitful in the kingdom of God, and have bad influence on other people. So these are all destructive, right? So when we realize that sins are destructive, then we say, Lord, please don't let that destroy me. And whenever, also when we have sinned, then God will look at it like dung, like feces. God doesn't like sins. When we sin, God just doesn't, it's like it's a very dirty thing. He doesn't want to stay. But He will stay in a person, if the person still has a living relationship with God, God will forgive him. But still, God doesn't like him to have sinful thought. His thought is all dirty. And one thing you notice is, sins, the effect of sins will stay. It will make us feel dirty, unclean, feel unworthy, feel we have no strength. Those feelings, have you had those feelings? I have had those feelings, I tell you. I'm honest with you. I have had those feelings. And I don't want those feelings anymore. So, I made up my mind. I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to, uh, you know, let sin control me. And God gave me this simple way to handle sins. Just the five steps of victory. Whenever a sinful thought came to me, for instance, if someone is not nice to me, and I get unhappy, when I get unhappy, that is already the beginning of sin. So immediately, I want to take care of that. I don't want to have nagging feeling. <coughs> immediately, awareness is destructive if I'm unhappy with the person. Even though that person has sinned, I'm unhappy with that person and apply the biblical principle to overcome evil with goodness. And then I pray and then I choose to smile and say nice things and choose to be forgiving and blessing. But some people say, I, I cannot do it. He's so bad. I have to punish him. I have to make him feel bad. But if I try to make him feel bad, who will suffer? Who will suffer? I will suffer. Yes, I will suffer. Why should I suffer because he sinned? You think of this way. He has sinned. Why should I suffer? His sin, of course I don't want him to suffer too. I want God to change him. But then I won't want myself to suffer because of Him. So I, I've made up my mind, no matter what, how bad someone is, how emotional someone is, how destructive someone is, that is His problem. That's basically garbage I don't take. That's it, very simple. Sins I don't take. If someone has done wrong, I don't take. And then the moment the sinful thought came to my mind, immediately I handle it. And I handle it with joy too. Thank God I have victory. Thank God I can overcome the sin by the help of God. God is so good. Also, I learned to appreciate God's holiness. Now, many people think to talk about holiness seems something so strict. For instance, many youth workers don't like to talk about holiness to youth because they think this is so serious, so strict. But God gave me this idea. Holiness is very beautiful. And he gave me these ideas like this. In heaven, one day when you go to heaven, there might be Christians on earth who don't like you very much. But when you go to heaven, they will smile at you. They will forget about everything on earth. They will not, you know, continue to be uh, unpleasant to us. They will be happy. Wow, so happy to see you here. And you look at the person, there's no negative feelings at all. But if you see them on earth, they have negative feelings, right? Some people who don't like you, they have negative feelings. But when you go to heaven, they have no negative feelings. They are so happy. Isn't that beautiful? In heaven, it's all perfect, all beautiful. And inside you too, it's all clean, all clear, all free, all joyful. Totally joyful and totally loving. Everyone is kind and loving. Everyone is happy. Isn't that beautiful? Heaven is beautiful. Holiness is beautiful. 
If the family is like that, is it, is, isn't that beautiful? But most families are not like that. Because most families, people just get used to talking negatively. Just get used to using criticism. Negative words, condemnation. So we want to avoid that and say positive words. Always say, I love you, I like you, you are important to me. I want to bless you, I want to help you. What can I do for you? What can I pray for you? So always saying positive things to make the family full of holiness. Holiness is love and patience and kindness and goodness. All these are holiness. So now I love to talk about holiness. Actually, I love to talk about anything about God. Anything about God is good. His wisdom is good. His beauty, sense of beauty is good. He created things that are beauty. His wisdom is great. Everything is good about God, right? Everything is perfect, perfect, perfect. So I really like God. That's why you see me talk about God all the time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My motivation to overcome sin is from the beauty of God. He's, he's so beautiful, so glorious, so I want to live in holiness all, my, all the days of my life. And if I have any simple thought, I'll ask God to forgive me. If I've said anything wrong, I'll ask Him to forgive me. With, you know, as soon as I'm aware, I, want to, I don't want to fall into sin anymore. I don't want to take away what I'm building on. Anytime I have sinned, it will take away what I'm building on. I describe it like this. We are all building on the foundation of Jesus. The moment you are sinning, you are tearing it down. For instance, I just heard someone who is serving in a church, but who is also having sex with more than one woman. You know, I'm very sad to hear that. And that pastor is very sad to hear about that. And He's not just tearing down what he's building. He's going negative. His relationship with God has problem. He could lose his salvation if he doesn't repent. It's not just zero. It's going negative. So, I've known people, as I've said, I've known people, two pastors who are leaders of denomination, who fell into sin and commit adultery. And another, another pastor who is not a leader of denomination, and then he also went to jail. Two pastors went to jail that I know personally. So sins are destructive. And I've seen so many families. Most Christian families, if you ask them, how is your family? They'll describe, oh, yelling, unhappy feeling. Now, one person might be yelling at the other one, and the other one is unhappy. You might be the one who is unhappy. You might not be yelling. He yells at you and then you are unhappy. You are also sinning. And then you might yell back. So, do you have the motivation to run away from sin? To really see sin as poison? It's poison. And Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 14, there was a man who was sick for 38 years and then he was healed. <coughs> And then Jesus said, see you're well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Sin will affect us in many ways. Affect our conscience, affect our relationship with people, affect our relationship with God, and also give in to the devil. That many people have evil spirit in them because of their sins. And for some people it's hard to drive out demons because of their sins. So, Sin will destroy our God's plan in our life. It take away God's plan. And one day when you go to heaven, God said, This is your plan that I planned for you. But this is how much you live out. Will you be sorry for that? God has planned so much. My goal is I want to live as much as possible close to the perfect plan of God. I could say no one is 100% perfect walking out the whole plan of God. If you really walk out the 100% perfect plan of God, your life will be really blossoming and blessing many people. But if you live as close to that as possible, it's already, already very good. So now, starting now, don't wait until later. Because 
the perfect plan of God starts now. Some people say, I wait until I retire and then I'll serve God. When you retire, you don't have the wisdom, you don't have the sharpness of mind. So start when you are young, when you are energetic, you still have good memory. That is the best. And don't, you know, laziness is also sin. Laziness, not to use our life. Now, can you think of sins that you need to repent of? Now, with sins, the first victory is repentance and forgiveness from God. That's the first victory. First, we need the forgiveness of God before we can overcome the sin. So, a lot of people talk about repentance. It's not just repentance. It's repentance and forgiveness and turn away from the sins. Repentance and forgiveness. Have to have forgiveness, not just repenting. Some people just say, oh, I'm sorry for my sins. That's the first step. Second, believe that God really forgives you. Next step, I hate that sin. Now the key to victory over sin is hate. I hate that sin. Say it together. I hate that sin. I don't want to follow sin anymore. I hate sin. No more sin. And I can have victory over sin when I handle it in my mind. When a sin came in my mind, I handle it right away. The moment we don't like somebody, immediately we handle it. Is it very hard? Is it very hard? Not very hard when you handle it right away. It's not very hard. And I thank God for this secret. Very simple, right? <laughs> handle it right away. That's the secret. Handle it when it starts to appear. When you notice. Now sometimes it appears before that. What I mean is, sometimes it's our expectation that paves the way for sins. For instance, you expect your husband or wife or someone to be very nice to you then you get frustrated. So, have lower expectation of people. It, did, it doesn't mean we don't have expectation, but don't have high expectation. When they fail, don't be so unhappy. And also, don't look for things in the world. Seek the things in heaven, then we'll have less chance for sin. When people always say, I want to get married, I want to get married. And then always have this, I want, I want, I want more money, I want this, I want that. Then they were disappointed and then it's easy to have uh, sin. So when we have lower expectation for ourselves, but I want to do, have higher motivation of what I can do for God. Have lower motivation of what I can get from people or what, how I can enjoy life. When I go to places <coughs> to do mission work, sometimes I go to places that have very poor food. I don't mind doesn't matter. I don't expect much. It doesn't matter. When I have the good food here, I thank God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I enjoy the food. I thank God for that. But I don't expect much. That whatever I have is enough already. That way, you are easily satisfied. Some people are hard to satisfy. Because they expect much. Okay? So I hope that at this point, we'll pray and ask God, to bring us to repentance and forgiveness of sin and to turn away from all sins. We stand together, stand up together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because your teaching is so good. Oh, keep recording. Just, uh, Holiness is so precious. Your holiness is so beautiful. Everything about God is so beautiful. Your love is so beautiful. Oh Lord Jesus, we want to live in the beauty of God. We want to live in the holiness of God. Oh Lord Jesus, forgive our sins that we have sinned against people. We have sinned against ourselves. We have sinned against God. Oh Lord Jesus, we have lustful thoughts. Please forgive our sins and help us to hate lust, to hate lustful thoughts, to hate any kind of pornography, to hate any kind of sin, sinful desire. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to hate sin. And also, sometimes we're affected by people. We dislike this. We hate this sin. We don't want to be affected by negative words of people. We won't, don't want to be affected by negative emotions of people. 
We want to live in your joy and peace and love. And we want to turn away from sin. Lord Jesus, the moment the sins appear, we are convinced they are destructive. They are destructive. They will destroy our lives. So we want to turn away from these sins and we want to say no to the sins. We want to follow God's holiness and always love God and bless people and always want to care about people and forgive people. It doesn't matter what they do to us. It doesn't matter. Because it's their problem, their fault. We don't have to take it seriously. We can forget about it. We can forgive them. And we can thank God we have this ability to forgive. We have this ability to love people. This is greater than the things in the world. Hallelujah. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to forgive the people around us who have hurt us. Help us to forgive them totally. To love them, to care about them. It doesn't matter. Even it seems to be unfair. Jesus dying on the cross is unfair. The Son of God was punished for us is very unfair. But we are saved by that. And even when we are treated unfairly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We won't die from that. And God will pay us back. God will give us back many, many more times when we are nice to people, when we forgive people, when we are kind to people, when we tell people about Jesus. When we help people, God will pay us back many, many more times. So we have faith in God and we want to follow God and love God and have motivation from you. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Your name be glorified. Your holiness is so beautiful. Hallelujah. Your love be glorified. Your holiness be glorified. That people will say the love of God is so good. The holiness of God is so good. Hallelujah. Praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.